In this question, we are told that angle O, or sorry, O, is the center of the circle, and we can see that that is 30 degrees. Question 1 asks us to determine the angle of B. So, many of you might straight away say that B is equal to 15 degrees, and you would be correct, but we need to just make sure that everyone watching this understands why we say that. So, if we have to have a look at angle B, we need to see how we got to angle B. Okay, so B comes from the following two letters. If you had to go backwards from B towards the edge of the circle, you would go along this purple line and you would end up at C. And if you had to go along this purple line over here, you would end up at A. And so we can say that AC formed B. So that, that chord AC forms B. So let's now start off at A and C, and let's see what other angles we can make. So if A goes to along the green line, it, it ends up at O, and if C goes along a green line, it ends up as O as well. So it looks like the letters A and C also make the angle O. And so angle B and angle, sorry, angle O and angle B, they share the same starting point, which is letters A and letters C. And so because of that, we can say that there is a relationship between them. Now the relationship is that the angle on the outside of the circle, so that's B, will always be half of the angle at the center. So half of 30 is 15, and the reason is because of the following. The angle at the center is always equal to two times the angle at the circumference. The circumference means the edge. Of course we need to make sure that O and B are on the same side of the circle segment. So if we had to connect a line between A and C, that would divide the circle into this segment to the right and this segment to the left. B and O are on the same side and so there's no problem over there. We can use that theorem. Now we can go along the red lines and let's see where we end up. Well if you go with A you end up at D and if you go with C you also end up with D. And so we can say that A and C also forms D. So that means that there is a relationship between angle O and angle D. Some of you at home might be wondering, does that mean that B and D share a common relationship? Yes, they do, and we'll be looking at that in the next theorem. But for now, we'll stick to the theorem that we do know. And so we can say that angle D is going to be half of 30, because the angle at the center is always double the angle at the circumference. And so there we have found angle B and angle D. So the main idea is that as long as all of those angles, B, O, and D, as long as they all come from the same point, which was A and C, then we can use these theorems.